G'day guys and welcome to another lot of Cisco practice questions and today we're going to be talking all about introduction to routing and communication and that's what we're going to discuss. So 276, what type of memory stores the routing table on Cisco routers? We've got ROM, NVRAM, Flash and RAM. The answer for this one is surprisingly D, RAM. So it's um, obviously volatile memory. But because it is start, part of the startup config, uh, that is where it resides. 277, computer A is sending data to computer B on a remote network. Looking at the location of the packet in transit in the figure below, which of the following statements are true? Select as many as apply. So with these types, you can probably just look at uh, eliminating what isn't true to make it a bit easier on yourself. So you've got the destination IP address is that of computer B. A is sending a message. B is the recipient, so they are the destination IP address. And we've got destination IP address is that of router 1. Not really, it's kind of B. Uh, destination MAC address is that of the switch. Mm, not really. Uh, the source MAC address is that of router 1. That's a maybe. The destination MAC address is that of router 1. So the source MAC address is that of router 1. And so it's out of these two here, and it's, so it's A and E. The source and destination MAC addresses can change uh, for routers um, in, in between sort of sending and receiving messages. That's sort of how that sort of pans out. And uh, obviously, being that computer B is the destination address, uh, that would make A true. So A and E for those ones. 278, when a router receives a packet, what does it do? Select two. So again, we're just eliminating what's wrong. Determines if a destination route exists in a routing table and what the next hop is. Determines if a destination MAC address appears in the routing table. Look at the destination IP address in the packet and filters traffic based on destination MAC address. So the router's obviously main job is to see what's in the packets, um, direct traffic, those sorts of things. So uh, for starters, and I'm pretty much several the answers are there. Determines the destination route exists in the routing table, what the next hop is, so that's what routers do. And looks at the destination IP address in the packet as well. So that's what it, when it first receives the package, it has a look inside and says, okay, this is going to here, I'll direct you over this way. So it's A and C. 279, what routes exist by default on your router? Static routes, dynamic routes, Connected routes, gateway of last resort, route. Uh, by default, it is C. Connected routes, basically this happens because it is connected to those networks, and that is how C is the answer. 280, which of the following represents one of the downfalls of static routes? They are shared automatically with neighboring routers. They are shared automatically with the entire network. They are manually configured by the router administrator. They generate network traffic to broadcast knowledge of the route. So with this one, uh, static generally means it needs to be configured. So that gives you a big hint there. And the answer is C. They are manually configured by the router administrator. So they have to physically type in those commands to ensure that the routes go to where they go. 281, which of the following represents an advantage of static routing? Less administrative burden over dynamic routing? Quite not the case. <laughs> Uh, no network bandwidth is being used by protocol sharing routing tables. Easier to configure on the network than dynamic router. Hardly true. Uh, use a higher administrative distance than dynamic routing protocols. So I've eliminated two there already for you at least. And the answer here in this case is B. No network bandwidth is being used by protocol sharing routing tables. And one of the main benefits uh, for doing the static routing by the, the router administrator is that um, those routing tables are generated by obviously whatever is inputted and this allows it to I guess sort of automatically add the routing tables between the routers sort of configured without having them to generate and sort of auto discover if you'd like. 282 you are the administrator for router 1 and have configured a static route to the 216-83110 network. Your company has loaded RIP version 1 on all the routers on the network and router 2 shares knowledge of a route to the 216-83110 network with a RIP update which router which route will your router use the static route the, the, sorry 
the default route, I'm having trouble reading it, the static route, the RIP version 1 route, or the GWLR. Alright, so, have configured, so that's a big get giveaway there. When you're configuring, you're generally making it static, so it is B, the static route. 283, which of the following two actions must uh, router do with an incoming packet in order to send it to its destination? Choose two. Determine if a route exists in the routing table. Look at the source IP address of the packet. Determine if an entry exists in the MAC address table. Look at the destination IP address of the packet. We've got to pick up two here, so eliminate what's not right. Determine if a route exists in the routing table. That's a possibility. Look at the source IP address of the packet. Uh, the incoming packet. It's not as necessary. Uh, determine if an entry exists in the MAC table. So we're probably looking at A and D here as the answers. Determine if a route exists in the routing table and look at the destination IP address of the packet. Obviously, it doesn't really care where it came from. It's received it. All it needs to know or wants to know is where the destination, where is it going to. And obviously, got to ensure that the route exists in the routing table so it actually knows where it needs to go. 284, what is the process called that, that the IP protocol used to determine in, if the system it is trying to communicate with is on a different network? Routing, anding, natting, switching. The process in this case is B, anding. And that's all folks. Thanks very much for joining in. Really appreciate you joining on the Cisco roller coaster. Love, love calling it that. And uh, I've got my website there, onlinecomputercoaching.com. I've got a Cisco resource in the description below if you guys feel free to buy it. I'll get a commission out of it. So I'd appreciate you so much if you did. Uh, if you don't, that's fine. That's all good. Keep clicking the subscribe button, like button, all those sorts of good buttons. And uh, make me a very happy man with plenty of smiles. So keep, keep doing that and I can keep making more and more videos. So really appreciate your support against guys. Thanks for hanging around. I'll see you all next time.